Hey everyone, this is Jaxi, and welcome back to Wargame Wednesday. Today we are going to be playing Unity of Command. I love this game. This is such a quick and breezy war game. If you only have like 10 to 30 minutes, but you want to feel like you completed a whole scenario, then this is an amazing start. So right here we are doing the Soviet uh, 1942 to 1943 campaign, and it's Operation Uranus. Yes, the Germans have gotten bogged down at Stalingrad, and we are going to counterattack. Now, one thing. This game, if you want the feeling of Blitzkrieg, even though we're doing Operation Uranus, um, Soviets might not be the campaign for you. You're noticing here in the southeast, you really need to do deep battle. You have to have your infantry just tank soviet units and attack over and over or uh, excuse me german units and attack over and over and over again so right here what we're doing we're just going to kind of bludgeon the romanian divisions here if you notice with unity of command all of the divisions at least in the default mode unless you have any mods are these interesting little bust figures and they do actually have steps instead of a deeper divisional style format but they show you if they have artillery like you'll see some of my units have stars next to them um the stars mean that the units experience it's gonna fight a little better you can see in the top right it shows you your combat factors attack defense if you're going into good weather poor weather city um if you are attacking in the woods if you're attacking over a river things like that and this scenario is meant to be really fast. It's only five turns, and for a brilliant victory, you want to do it in two. Now, I don't know if we're going to quite pull that off. I'm not going to reset and reset and be artificial with you guys. I just want to do the campaign as is, have a little fun, keep Ward Game Wednesday up. And this game, one thing I like, the AI is actually really good. Now, right there, I just did an overrun attack. If you have a successful enough attack and in the top right when it gives you the combat um, estimate it'll tell you if you do an overrun and overrun will take a few steps out of supply each step you'll notice mine are red and the germans are blue those are steps in supply and as you attack or get attacked you will lose supply in your steps and have to replenish i think you get two per turn and in overrun you lose two steps worth of supply but you get to attack again so it's really good if you can get it you notice in the south we have basically blown the front wide open we have partially encircled or completely swept aside most of the romanian units up here in the north it's a little tougher going um i'm looking around best i can get are some one-to-one -one odds and my armored divisions have to cross the Don. And the way it bends around and the way they have two Panzer divisions in reserve, one Romanian, it just, it's going to be a little tougher. And you'll notice right there, I'm losing major combat potential trying to attack over the river. It kind of sucks to have this armor and have it be wasted. And right there, not a good attack, but... If I can move this one Romanian unit, no, nothing doing. But you'll notice right there, he gets destroyed. He had no steps that were left in supply. They were all gray out, and he had a little minus next to him. That's a unit that's been attacked so many times, it's basically going to fight at a major disadvantage. And right there, now we get a full destruction. We've kind of blown things open. But you want to do the historical thing here. You want to try to do a double envelopment. But like I said, the AI is actually pretty adept, and the game knows that in every scenario, you're not really going to have a loss condition. What it's going to try to do instead is prevent you from achieving your win condition in a timely factor. So... We have a bunch of supply points, and the way the game does supply, if a unit is cut off for one round, it can still attack. It'll lose a couple steps of supply, but it can still attack and move. Two rounds, it can attack, or um, excuse me, it can move, but it can't attack. So if you're cut off for two rounds, that unit's starting to really hurt. 
and then three rounds it basically goes down to zero and you're out of luck. So right there you'll notice that little red exclamation point and how those units lost one to two steps each. The Germans are partially cut off. The sixth army is in trouble, but as you notice, I did not fully complete the circle, and even with zone of control, they threw a panzer unit to a random hex. But in a little bit, I'll show you with the supply layer, that's actually one of my supply points. So it might not be super realistic, and this is where you can say, oh, I'd rather play decisive campaigns or war in the east. But this panzer unit is just going to be a sacrificial lamb, like right there he's cut off. But now my units in the south, you can see they have the exclamation point. And the way the Germans win, I kind of opened up that uh, supply point in Stalingrad. That was a little foolish on my part. I got kind of overzealous. So now if I don't figure something out, I can start losing supply in the south. So I'm going to try to bump this German unit off the supply point and reopen that for me. Because that Panzer is going to just sit there. The AI knows it doesn't have to beat me and it won't. But if that Panzer unit sits there, then I get no supplies in the south. And then I either have to try to recomplete the encirclement from the north or do something else. And the way the game works you have supplies move one space per so you'll notice my supply points are worth eight that means they'll move eight hexes now roads and those are the little dashes going across the screen roads will expedite that a lot and then the supplies will move all the way down the road and then spread out eight hexes from there but i haven't completed that road right there they still have one hex open so Really, because it's turn to my strategy right now, I just want to try to capture all the victory points. If I can do that, the scenario will end. It's not like some other games where, you know, in decisive campaigns, the enemy will get a chance to counterattack and move you off your victory hexes. In this one, if you take the points, the scenario just instantly ends. So, again, not super realistic. You can afford to get a riddle. A little reckless even though the scenarios carry over the prestige points are really just did you capture your objectives did you do it in a timely manner the game doesn't recognize casualties from scenario to scenario and the only thing that really can change scenario to scenario right there we got our first one right on time on turn two that's great but the only thing is that change scenario to scenario are you can spend your prestige on extra divisions but then you have lower prestige and the way the campaigns branch eventually to finish the campaign you need to get first decisive victories and then brilliant victories so in the beginning you can get away with normal victories but if you want to see everything the game has to offer for all the scenarios you do need to be winning at a higher level but you'll notice here, um, you can just mouse over units. It shows you those combat factors. It shows you your movement points. Pretty intuitive. I like that it's just an estimate of combat because then you can't just game it and know 100%. I know Panzer Corps, you can set it to be just destiny and have it play out the same way no matter what. But I don't think that's fun. I don't know why you do it in Panzer Corps and I'm glad it's not here. That division, I tried to move the Panzers off. Um, I'm kind of torn to figure out how I want to get supplies if I just want to suicide and try to get all three points because I don't know if I can get um, Kalach. I just don't think with the rivers there that I can pull it off the way the Don bends around and all its uh, tributaries there. I just don't see it happening. And I'm mousing over. Really nothing doing. What's nice, um, you can see the orange. That's a really big obvious indicator if you want to know what units you still need to move or who can do what. Look for orange. If you see the little black outline, it means they can just move. They cannot attack. Uh... Not much interesting here. 
but I think I can take this point, and even if you can't take all your points for a decisive victory or a brilliant victory, you do get more prestige for as many objectives as you can capture as early as you can. So it's worth it to try to capture as many as you can on time. Then you'll get more points, and that's usually the difference between a decisive victory and a normal victory. And so I've got two out of three. I'm going to try to make sure my supply lines are opened up in case this goes to turn three. I would still like the decisive victory. I don't want to settle for a normal one, so I have to kind of have this backup strategy here. But things are looking pretty good. It's a little bit of an easier scenario. The German one is actually the uh, Fall Blau day one is a little harder. But we are going to go to turn three. And you'll notice here, I have some units out of supply partially, but they have some units with a brighter red exclamation point. That means they're two turns out. Those units cannot attack, and most of them don't even have supply. So while the AI tries to get cute there, set up partial encirclement, I'm now fully back in supply, except for a couple units to the north, but they're not my heavy hitters. The south is back in supply. Sixth army is mostly encircled. The only units that have full supply for the Germans are Romanians, so... I'm trying to figure out how to do this most efficiently, but this one is probably about a game. Bump him off, move my armor units up. Oh, come on there with ours. And we win. So we got a decisive victory. We got 70 prestige over the regular victory. Unfortunately, we were one turn off from a brilliant victory. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching just another Wargame Wednesday. I love Unity of Command. If you don't have it, check it out. It is so beer and pretzels, so fast, so much fun. Thank you guys for watching. Um, if you liked it, let me know in the comments so you can basically have a voice in what I do in future Wargame Wednesdays. If you want more war games or you want some history videos, I also do book reviews, then subscribe and stay excited about history.